today we're going to solve exponential equations and there's two types of equations we're going to look at today. There's exponents on both sides and exponents on one side. Usually when we have exponents on both sides, there's one specific way that we're going to solve them and it's using this property. If b to the x equals b to the y, then x must equal y. If the bases are exactly the same, then the exponents must also be the same. So in number one, five to the stuff equals five to the other stuff. Since it's both five raised to something, what do you know about stuff and other stuff? They must be the same. So three x minus two, that would be stuff, is going to equal 5x plus 8, formerly known as other stuff. Do you know how to solve that equation? Take a moment, pause the video, solve that equation. Check your answer. It's just like two-step algebra one solving. Number two, there is a slight problem with this. It should be written e to the 3x equals e to the 2x minus 1. That minus 1 is supposed to be in the exponent. Sorry about that. So number 2, we have e to the something equals e to the something else. So something and something else must be the same. So we can set up the equation 3x equals 2x minus 1, and we can solve that equation. So I would subtract 2x on both sides to get x equals negative 1. So this is super duper easy until what happens in number 3? 8 and 2 are not the same. So before we do anything, we need to think about what can we do to make 8 and 2 the same. So take the bigger number, 8. Is there another way to write 8 in terms of 2? Think about like 2 squared is 4. What's 2 to the third? 8. So 8 is the same as 2 to the third. You can't raise the other side to the third to make it match eight. You're not trying to make one side bigger. You're trying to make the bigger base smaller, but you're not really making it smaller. You're just rewriting it in terms of two. So we're going to take the eight out and we're going to put the two to the third in its place. So the left side will look like two to the third instead of eight. But that 8 had an exponent of x, that exponent of x is still there. You're just multiplying the 3 and the x together. So the thing worth noting is that we took the bigger base and rewrote it in terms of the smaller base. Now we have 2 to the stuff equals 2 to the other stuff. So stuff is going to equal other stuff take a moment, solve that equation. I want you to try number four on your own. Think about the bigger base, 27. Think about if we took 27 out, what could we put in its place? So when I see that the other side is three to the fifth, I'm thinking it'd be really nice if I could write 27 as three to the something. So I think three squared is nine, that's not gonna work. What's three to the third? 27, there we go, 27 is three to the third. So you take the 27 out, and in its place we would put three to the third times two x in the exponent equals three to the fifth. Now the bases match, which means the exponents match. What is three times two x? 6x. Don't bother with your calculator. Leave it as a fraction. x equals 5 6. Okay, so far, with exponents on both sides, either the bases are already the same and you put the exponents equal to each other, or the bases aren't the same and you think about how to make those bases the same 
and then you can put the exponents equal to each other. So now we're going to go to number, we'll do eight. Number eight's the more complex, so we'll just go straight for the more complex problem. We're going to skip number six, so we're going to do number eight using this whole right side here. We have exponents on both sides, but is there any way to make two and five match? Can you write five as two raised to the something? Two squared is four, two to the third is eight. Neither of those are five, so that's not going to work. So instead, we are going to take the log of both sides. So up here, I'm going to write log of two raised to the three x minus seven equals log of five raised to the two x. We've spent a bunch of time expanding and condensing logs and learning about properties of logs. What do you know about exponents inside logs? Exponents inside logs move down in front and become coefficients in front. So this becomes 3x minus 7 times the log of 2 and 2x times the log of 5. This is where that property really comes in handy because even though our bases don't match, it allows us to bring those x's down out of the exponent so that we can deal with them. All right, now if I actually punch log of two into my calculator, it's gonna be a crazy decimal, and then I'd have to distribute that crazy decimal, and we would have decimals all over the place. I prefer to contain my decimals. So here's my strategy. Which side looks more complex right now, the left side or the right side? The left side looks more complex. So let's make it less complex by taking that log away on that side. Divide both sides by the log of two. That way the left side will just be three X minus seven. On the right side, you can do log of five divided by log of two. So log button five, divided by log button two. Oops, you can't see my screen at all. There we go. Okay, so we did log of five divided by log of two and we got this decimal, 2.322. We still have the two X there. This is 2 times x times 2.322, so I can do the 2.322 times 2, or 3. 2.322 times 2, 4.644x. Now this doesn't look pretty, because you don't like decimals, and I know you don't like decimals, but is it possible to solve this equation even though there's decimals? We would subtract 3x on both sides, so 4.644 minus 3. Oops. Yeah, that's right, sorry. See, even I get confused with decimals sometimes, it's okay. And then we divide by 1.644. Negative 4.258 equals x. Now this isn't a super precise answer because we rounded way up here and then use the rounded value from that point on, but it's okay, it's approximate enough. But that's why I used three numbers after the decimal because I know that I'm rounding, which I know makes it less accurate, so I'm going to use several numbers after the decimal to make it at least a little bit more accurate. 
Okay, I will try not to give you very many of these because these are the labor intensive problems. So if your base doesn't match and you have exponents on both sides, take the log of both sides, bring the exponents down, divide the logs to get them all on one side, and then just deal with the decimals. Now let's look at number five. What's different about number five? There's an exponent only on one side. Anytime you have an exponent on only one side, it's actually a really easy problem. Isolate the exponent. So if there was something multiplied in front or if something added after this, you'd want to get rid of those things. But once you have two to the x by itself, we're stuck. X is stuck in the exponent. We're going to change forms. And what do I mean by change forms? I mean, do the log ride. Woo! So start with the two and do the log ride. Woo! I'm not hearing any woos out there. So log base two of seven equals x. And the last few days on your assignments, I've been asking you to use the change of base formula. Don't use the log base feature. Use the change of base formula so that no matter what calculator you have, you would know how to evaluate log base 2 of 7. And this is why. We know that we can do log of 7 divided by log of 2, and that will tell us what x is. So in the calculator, log 7 divided by log 2 x is going to equal 2.807. Trying to write too hard. Okay, number seven. What do you think we need to do first? We need to get this thing by itself before we change forms. How do we get rid of that 4? Divide both sides by 4. So we would have e to the 3x equals what is 12 divided by 4? 3. And now we're stuck with x in our exponent. Anytime you're stuck, change forms. So 1, 2, 3, woo! Still not hearing any woos. You guys are leaving me hanging. Log base e of 3 equals 3x. Before you try to punch log base e in your calculator, what is log base e the same as? Natural log, ln. That's ln of 3, which will actually make less work for you because now it's just one button in your calculator. ln of 3 is 1.099. And then final step to get x by itself, divide both sides by 3. Okay. Take a look at a potential problem, like number six. What do you suppose you would have to do first? Add seven to both sides, and then divide by four. Number five, you would need to subtract six on both sides, then divide by two. Whatever's raised to the exponent, get that by itself. So to recap, if you have exponents on both sides, get the bases to match, and then the exponents are equal. If you can't get the bases to match, that's when you have to take the log of both sides. That's the more difficult problem. I'm not going to give you very many of those. If you only have a log, an exponent on one side, then get that thing with the exponent by itself, Woo! change forms, and then evaluate the log and finish solving.